Hi everybody, my name's Andrew and today I'm driving a 2015 VW GTI. You may have seen this car in the towing video that I did recently, but today I'm gonna give you a full walk around of it, tell you how well it's held up after 120,000 miles, and why I think this might be the best fun daily driver for around $15,000. The first generation Mark I Golf was first presented in 1974 and was originally known as the Rabbit in the US. The GTI version followed in 1976 and has since become one of the most iconic names in hot hatches. This is the seventh generation car which first went on sale in Europe in 2013 but didn't reach the US until 2015. It was the first car in the US to use the new MQB platform which allowed it to be both slightly larger than the outgoing Mark VI but also slightly lighter. This particular car was bought by its current owner in May of 2018 with a little over 40,000 miles. It now has about 120,000, although I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment when we take it out for a drive. First, let's check out the exterior and interior of this car. It's a 2015 GTI base S trim level with no options, hence the aftermarket headlights there. Finished in reflex silver metallic with the standard 18 inch Austin alloy wheels. The Mark VII generation is by far my favorite looking generation of GTI. The new Mark VIII has gone back to the sort of more rounded, bubbly design of the Mark V, and I'm not as big of a fan of that. Also, this design for being nearly 10 years old at this point is aging very well, I think. Now, obviously, after 120,000 miles, you might expect some minor rock chips or door dings or something. I don't know how well you might be able to see it, but the plastic trim on the front here is peeling quite badly on both corners. Aside from that though, the exterior of this car has held up very, very well. Hopping inside the GTI, it's more of the same. The interior, once again, has held up very nicely for 120,000 miles. I really love these plaid seats in here. In fact, so much so that I would rather get a base or SE GTI over a fully loaded one just so I can have these instead of the leather. The materials in here, in traditional Volkswagen fashion, are very functional, very durable, but nothing feels overly cheap, and everything, in my opinion, looks nice. My one gripe is the screen here. If I'm going to turn the car on here, and you'll see just how small this screen is. This is a 2015 specific thing. Regardless of what trim level you got on the GTI, you got this little teeny tiny screen. This car doesn't even have a backup camera either. 2016 and up, they gave it a little bit of a bigger screen that fills up this whole uh, bezel right here. And then 18 with the facelift, it got an even bigger screen. Another detail that I noticed straight away in here is the screen in the gauge cluster, specifically that it's a color screen. The reason I noticed that is because my all track if you remember, was newer than this car and was a higher trim than this car, but it did not have a color screen. This, as far as I can tell, doesn't actually have any more functionality than the one in the Alltrack, but it just looks nicer. Something I always love to talk about with German cars is the quality of the switch gear. All the dials, knobs, buttons, everything, all the controls just have a feeling to them. It's just very nice. Another thing I love about the interior, quite possibly my second favorite thing actually after the seats, is the center armrest. Now the center console storage in this car is not particularly big, nor is the armrest even particularly squishy, but it slides in and out and it ratchets up and down so you can have it at a higher position. It's not a particularly revolutionary thing, I know, but I just like it. So let's take the GTI for a quick drive here. Right off the bat, I'm going to go sport mode and manual on the paddle shifters. Sorry, Jacob, but it has to be done because the first thing I want to talk about is performance. <laughs> Specifically, the performance of this particular car because it has a Unitronic Stage 1 Plus tune on it. And performance-wise, this car is actually very similar um, to my F31. I don't know if you saw the tuning video that I did on that recently, but um, this car with the tune makes 310 horsepower 
and 350 foot-pounds of torque, which is almost identical. And even though this car's front-wheel drive, it's actually the same, almost exactly zero to 60 as my car now because my car's all-wheel drive, but this one's also lighter. So the fastest time with the draggy that I recorded with my car, I think was 5.17 with the rollout. And we tested this car um, a few weeks ago with the draggy too. And I wanna say it was 5.23 or 5.22 with a rollout, so negligible. Either way, this car is pretty quick for what it is. It's not the fastest car in the world, but it's a lot of fun though. Handling wise, this car is excellent. Although, if you know what the GTI is, then you already know that. So I'm not gonna harp on about it too much. What I do wanna talk about though is something I said I was gonna talk about at the start of the video, how well this car's held up after 120,000 miles. And most of those miles too have been with the tune and a lot of them have not been gentle miles, I'll just say that, between the way that Jacob drives this car and myself. <laughs> um, this car has had a rough life. It's been very well taken care of, but it hasn't had an easy life, that's for sure. Towing too, by the way. I've already covered how well the inside and outside have held up, and the answer reliability-wise is actually the same too. There hasn't been anything that's gone majorly wrong with this car in its lifetime. There have been a few small things. The fuel door uh, locking mechanism broke at one point and the water pump leaks a little bit, but overall it's held up very, very well over 120,000 hard tuned towing miles. <laughs> it's not just this one car either. My Alltrack had 100,000 miles to on it too when I sold it and had absolutely no issues. And a quick look on forums will tell you that the Mark 7 platform in general has proven to be incredibly solid thus far. Features wise, this car also does fairly well. Like I said before, it doesn't have a backup camera, which is incredibly annoying for me anyway, but it does have a few other nice things. It's got heated seats, heated mirrors. Both front seats are partially power adjustable. Um, it's got Bluetooth. So, you know, really it's not that bad in here. It is missing a few things that would be nice. It doesn't have any safety features at all, but overall it's not bad. And of course the GTI is also an excellent daily driver. As we've proven, it's great on gas when it needs to be. You can fit four people in it comfortably. You can fit an eight foot long two by four in it if that's important to you for whatever reason. And if you look on Auto Trader, there's plenty of these with even lower mileage than this one for $15,000 or less. All of that combined with the impressive performance and impressive reliability makes this the best fun daily driver car for the money, in my opinion. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing for plenty more content with this car and others.